Hi there, welcome to Hidden Crown Hair Extensions. My name is Bonnie B, and this video I'm gonna show you how easy it is to fit your new Hidden Crown Hair Extension straight from the package. So here's what you'll need. Your Hidden Crown Rat Tail Comb, needle nose pliers, and a pair of scissors. So when you're taking your new Hidden Crown Hair Extension out of the package, it is going to be attached to the cardboard and it's also going to have two security ties, they're, they're also considered zip ties, around the hair at the top. Now, if you need to exchange, wait to cut these security ties off and you can send us a, a photo at accounts at hiddencrown.com holding the hair extension up next to your hair to see if you might need um, assistance in an exchange. So I'm going to carefully cut these zip ties off of the extension. Careful not to cut the wire. You want to make sure there's no wire in, in the area of where you're cutting the um, zip tie off. So go ahead and remove those. And when you open up your hidden crown hair extension, you're gonna see a somewhat of a, it's a, it's kind of like a pulley system, the wire with the micro bead. The wire is weaved through the right hand side of the extension and through the micro bead. And on the left hand side, it is tied off the reason why it's so easy to fit this to your individual head shape is because this is a pulley system. So the micro bead acts as a tension um, weight and it also, at the end when you have it fitted right, it also holds the wire to the fabric elastic snug and to where you don't have to worry about tying off more knots in it. Um, so you definitely want tension when pulling the wire in and out. Now, when you receive your Hidden Crown Hair Extension, you're gonna have to actually pull a little snug to get the wire to move in and out of the micro bead because the micro bead is actually somewhat closed. It's not clamped all the way, um, but it's also not open to where the wire can freely move in and out because that would make it near impossible for you to be able to fit it properly to your head shape. I hold this side of the extension in between my finger and thumb, my forefinger and thumb. I put my forefinger and my thumb in front of those knots so that there isn't, so we're not pulling on that wire from the fabric elastic. I hold it snug on this side and then I just gently pull that wire to get it to move in and out. And sometimes you have to pull quite snug, so don't be afraid to pull quite snug. And if you were to accidentally um, break the wire, cut it, or make it come undone from the extension, we have a video tutorial on how to rewire your hair, your hidden crown hair extension. Super easy, your package comes with um, an extra set of wire and micro beads. There's enough in this little baggie to refit and rewire your Hidden Crown Hair Extension up to an additional four times from this initial fitting. Okay, so we're gonna get started. Now, I have a very tiny head shape. I actually have one of the hardest head shapes to fit. Um, the Hidden Crown Hair Extension because I have a very flat occipital bone in the back here and it just keeps going flat. So with the small shape of my head and that flat occipital bone, it is quite hard. I know that a lot of people with my head shape will question themselves when they're fitting it, but trust me, once it's fitted and you have it on properly within an hour of wearing it for, you know, straight out of the package, it will start to subside that insecure feeling, that awareness of it moving or feeling like it's gonna come off. Just, just leave it on for at least an hour and it will mold to your head shape from the heat of your scalp. So what we're gonna do when we get started is regardless if you wear a parting in your hair, you're going to need to create a parting. So what I tell people is for anyone who doesn't wear a parting anywhere in their head, go ahead and just do it straight down the middle. 
that will be the easiest for you. And once you have it fitted and it's on, you know, you can make all your hair go, you know, back the way you want it to without a parting. So, but if you are someone who wears a parting, just go ahead and start with where you like your parting to be and that will be how you fit it and wear it primarily. And um, I'm somebody who changes my part all the time, so I, I just fit mine and then I make it work however which way I wanna wear my hair. So today my part is somewhat off to the side of the middle of my head. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull this slightly close together, just like this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that my fingers are on top. You do not want them like this with your fingers facing up. You wanna have complete control of the extension. So I have my fingers pinched on the both corners of the extension where the wire is. And on my head shape, now keep in mind, this is just a guide because nobody's head shape is the same. So when I say about an inch to two inches from your hairline, everybody's going to be somewhat fluctuating within those measurements. I know I have some clients that like their wire to sit further back, but their head shape is a lot more um, larger than most. So you'll find where it fits just right on your head shape. So just use my measurements and my fitting as a guide. So I'm going to place the wire about an inch to an inch and a half from my hairline. Then I'm going to gently slide. It's gonna go slow because remember, there's tension in that wire. Now I'm not focusing on the back of the extension at all. I'm focusing strictly on the wire first. And I'm just gently going to bring the extension down. Now I know where my ears are, so I know that the two sides need to be at least about an inch or so above my ear when it's sitting on top of all my hair. Because once you pull the top half of your hair up and over, the area opens up and loosens up and you do not want these two sides sitting on top of your ears. So right here is where I'm gonna go ahead and stop and I'm gonna make it snug so I'm, I'm just I've got it pretty snug where you see where it's indenting all the way around. And for me, because I focus on my ears first, this back part automatically just goes straight to my occipital bone. So it's kind of high up on my head shape and that's supposed to be what it is. The extension in the back should not be sitting low on your nape. Now, if I were to pull it too tightly, that would be an improper fitting and this is what would happen. It would bunch up, this would go higher, these two sides would go higher and it would just want to pop off my head when I'm trying to put it on. So you'll find that sweet spot on your head shape for the two sides right above the ears and for this back weft area to be right at your occipital bone and the wire not too far back, but not too far forward. So this feels like, and you can see how far up the two sides come up on my head shape because it's so small. But that's okay because once it's on, this hair in the front is gonna fill out on the sides of my face and it's gonna make it look a lot more natural looking, especially because I have thinner hair. So I feel like I've got a perfect fitting right where it's at. And remember, my head shape is not gonna be just like yours, it's just a guide. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pinch the wire and the micro beads so it doesn't move when I remove it from my head. And I'm going to take my needle nose pliers now, my needle nose pliers have some teeth in the front, but they have this flat area of clamping. And that's the part I'm gonna use because if you use these teeth, it's gonna cut into the micro bead and it could cause like sharp edges on it. So I suggest making sure that you have a flat part of your needle nose pliers when you're clamping. 
Now you want to make sure that you clamp super, super hard. I do it a few times just to ensure that that microbead is completely clamped shut. I think that's pretty good. Now I'm gonna show you what it looks like, where it's placed. I don't, I, you don't want to clamp the microbead over the fabric elastic. It wants, you wanna make sure it's right in front of it because if you ever have to remove your wire um, to refit it or rewire it, what, whichever, for whatever reason, you, don't, you wanna make sure that you have an area to cut that wire from in between the fabric elastic and the microbead. Um, I've even sometimes had the microbead um, clamp shut even more further in front of it. So just as long as it's somewhat near that fabric elastic, just not on it or too far away from it is great. And now what I'm gonna do is cut the excess wire from the microbead. And I make sure to not leave a super long ending of the wire because you don't want that to accidentally poke you in your head. And you don't want to cut it too short either. So you'll you'll know you'll see what I mean when I when you see it for yourself. So I'm gonna go ahead and place the wire where I originally fitted. I'm gonna push down on the two sides. And then I'm going to just slide this back area down to where it doesn't want to go anymore. You do not want to do this. It's not a headband and it's not stretchy and that's most likely gonna make the wire slide back. So what you're doing is fitting a, a, the extension to your head shape like a halo or like a crown would fit your head shape around. So it's not a headband, it's not supposed to, you know, fit like a headband to where it goes low on the bottom and it stays put. It's just fitted around the occipital um, crown area of your head shape. All right, and so that feels really good. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to put it on this way, but we have alternate easier ways to apply your hidden crown hair extension. And we have videos um, and showing you how to do that easily. So what I do is I go ahead and do this front part first and then just come around with the rat tail comb and pull out. Now you want to not dig up and over because you do not want to pull too much of your hair up and over the extension. So once you have all of it around pulled up and over, Okay, and then the last thing that you're gonna do, one of the most important things when you're putting it on, regardless of the way that you put your hidden crown hair extension on, you're gonna take your rat tail comb, you're going to, and this is for even the people that do not wear um, their hair with a parting, before you move your hair back to however you like it styled, you wanna do this first. This is one of the most important parts because it keeps it, anchored, it makes the wire disappear, and you do not want any of your hair strands laying under the wire while you're wearing your hidden crown hair extension. That's very, very important. So what I'm gonna do is line up this comb in my part, and I'm going to go straight this way and straight that way, not diagonal, not back, not forward, just really straight up and down in the uh, parting where your hair is parted. And I'm going to somewhat dig down aggressively, not aggressively to like hurt yourself or cause any kind of scratching on your scalp, but enough to where the teeth of the comb are going to grab your hair strands from laying under that wire. And as you're doing this, the wire will flow straight through the teeth of the comb and it'll, the comb will pull up all these hair strands that lay under it. So that also, just makes the wire disappear as well. And I'm gonna do this on both sides. And when you're doing this at home, you can get up close in a mirror and you'll be able to definitely see any remaining hair strands that are laying under the wire if, if there are any. So just be very, very important. Make sure all those hair strands are not laying under that wire while you're wearing your hidden crown hair extension. Okay, so this was how easy it was to fit your hidden crown hair extension. I'm wearing a 12 inch 60-8.
And um, that's it. It's that easy. Thank you so much for your purchase and welcome to Hidden Crown Hair Extensions. <music>